Hey folks, this is Kalani. It looks like patch 8.3 might be just around the corner. The PTR is happily chugging along and doesn't appear to have stopped in the last week. We have some updates to the super overpowered Vulpira racials, a bunch of raid testing has been underway, we might see one of our most beloved Blizzard games very soon, and there's some nurse for the Eternal Palace as well. Let's jump right in. First things first, the Vulpira racials that everyone is going crazy about have some animations and updates now. The camp and return to camp racials don't seem to have changed in their functionality, but now you can actually set up a cool little camp which provides you with a handful of perks. So not only is this racial one of the most convenient and useful racials out there, it's also now one of the best looking, most fun and interactive racials we've ever seen. Right now when you use the make camp racial ability, your Vulpira will play plop down a tent wherever you are out in the world, complete with an exploding backpack and a functional campfire. I'm not too sure why the backpack explodes, but hey, I'm not complaining, it's explosions. Maybe it's just leftover goblin stuff from the model copy over, or maybe blowing stuff up is how you take down your camp, but the campfire actually lets you cook food in your camp as well. You can use it as a cooking fire, and so can other players, they can just walk up and start cooking on your own campfire. So if your friends or party members ever need a fire, and for some reason they can't find their own make a fire button, you can whip down a super special campfire complete with tent in just 5 seconds. It will reset your current camp location though, but it might be worth it just to show off your shiny camp to the passers-by. What's also really interesting about the camp you set up is that it actually provides you with a rested location as well, both for yourself and for anyone stopping by. That means you can change talents, change Heart of Azeroth essences, instantly log out and gain rested experience anywhere you want out in the world. That sounds pretty handy for sure. Now the camp doesn't last forever, you get a buff that lasts for 5 minutes whenever you use the racial and when that buff expires, or when you click it off, the camp will disappear. You can recast it as often as you like, set it down in the perfect position and keep it going indefinitely, but as soon as you leave the camp it's on a 5 minute timer unless you put it down again. That's just for the actual physical camp and its benefits though. Your location of the camp is still saved and you can port back to it whenever you want using the return to camp racial. That has a 1 hour cooldown, so it's like another hearthstone that you can set up anywhere you want. I also did a few more tests to try and figure out the limitations with the camp and return to camp racials. So far it looks like you can set it up anywhere in the open world, so you could do it outside of a dungeon or outside of a raid if you really wanted to. Say if you wanted to farm a specific transmog or a specific mount or anything else from one dungeon every day, you could just plop it down outside that dungeon and return to camp when you log in and clear out the dungeon for the day and go about the rest of your business. Rinse and repeat tomorrow. Super easy. You can also return to the camp from anywhere else. Any expansion, any city, any planet, it doesn't seem to be limited in any way. Your camp location also persists through logouts. So it doesn't matter if you log back in in the same day or a few days later, the actual location that you set your camp will persist until you move it or change it yourself. That to me is still insane for a racial. This is definitely the most convenient thing you can ever add to the game, your own Hearthstone location wherever you want it on a one hour cooldown that you can chop and change and move around however often you fancy, and it's available to all Vulpira. If you make a Vulpira mage, you're going to be able to get around the world like nobody else, it's going to be so exciting. Imagine it, you can have your camp anywhere in the world you want, plus one Hearthstone location in any inn of your choice, plus portals to every major city. That basically means you have a quick travel to anywhere and everywhere you want. Only sounds slightly convenient, right? They also added a cute cutscene thing for when you return to camp, and a camp will pop up for 5 minutes whenever you hit return to camp as well, so you're always going back to a tent no matter what, even if you haven't been to that location in a week. I have no idea how the caravan got all the way up here, but hey, it's bringing me back to my camp so I'm not going to ask too many questions, I'll just roll with it. Now the Bag of Tricks racial doesn't seem to have been updated yet, so that's still the same, doesn't really do anything, but the other one, the chance to get a bag of goodies whenever you kill humanoids, is starting to work. When you kill a humanoid you have a chance to randomly generate a bag of salvaged goods. 
you actually don't even have to loot the mobs to get it. It's a chance on kill, not a chance on loot, which I found was kind of strange. On the PTR right now, the bags contain a lot of Cataclysm profession items, cloths, volatiles, elementium ore, even pyrite ore. I haven't gotten anything from the other expansions right now, even though the mobs I was getting the bags from were BFA monsters. That seems a bit strange. So maybe the loot table isn't complete right now, but it looks like the plan is for these salvaged goods to be an extra source of profession materials materials, and quite a variety of materials at that. That's going to be super valuable no matter who you are, especially considering that this is once again just a racial ability. If this were tied to a profession or something which requires, you know, effort, time, input, any of those three things, I think it would be a bit more understandable, but for a racial ability to provide such potential seems kind of crazy. Vulpira will definitely be one of the best races to play if all of these racials go live like this. This isn't the only update that we've gotten recently. The dev team has been pretty busy this past week, and not just on the 8.3 PTR. I kind of assumed everything would calm down a little bit leading up to BlizzCon, I honestly didn't expect to see anything during October, but they're pumping a bunch of content into the public test realm, including testing of the new raid encounters in the new raid tier. Right now, 5 of the 12 bosses in the Nihilotha raid have been tested already, and this is just the first round. I assume we'll see the other 7 bosses in the next 2 weeks before BlizzCon, Con at the rate they're going, and then after BlizzCon we'll probably continue to see testing of the mythic versions of the fights. Raid testing has been a bit weird this expansion, it's usually one of the later things to happen in any given patch or PTR cycle, and seeing a lot of raid testing scheduled means we should expect the patch sort of soon after that. They were testing the Battle of Desert Law bosses right up until that patch went live, which was kind of crazy, but it looks like BlizzCon isn't slowing them down at all. The PTR is chugging along quite nicely, updates are coming in, the gaps and corners are being filled in slowly but surely, the racials are getting polished up as we saw earlier, I could see patch 8.3 launching very soon after BlizzCon at this rate. And it seems like they already have a lot of the legwork done and ready to go. Now they just need to make sure it all works and makes sense. It's like they have all the puzzle pieces, they just need to put it together and make sure it ships properly. I also can't believe how open they're leaving the PTR stuff to. None of it seems encrypted or hidden, so you can find almost all of the plot points for 8.3 and our fight with Nazoth on Wowhead right now, if that's of interest to you. You can go ahead and check it out, but when I say everything, I mean practically everything. The betrayals, the schemes, the hidden plans, the plotting. I mean, it's weird. They tried so hard to hide 8.2.5 and the whole Sarfang vs Sylvanas thing that we all kind of knew was coming anyway, you know, it'd been leading up to that for so long, but our final confrontation with Nazoth is happily running around in the streets with its knickers off. We can see everything. The way things are going, we're for sure going to find out how that all ends at BlizzCon before the raid even comes out. But yeah, the raid testing for the Nihilotha raid in patch 8.3 is already underway, so if you want to hop on and test out some of the new encounters before they're released, look out for some of the next few bosses that get scheduled. I wouldn't expect the PTR for 8.3 to last into the new year at this rate. But another interesting PTR beta-ish thing going on right now is all of the data mining for Warcraft 3 Reforged. You might have forgotten about one of our favourite RTS games and the plans to pretty it all up and re-release it for the world to play Footmen Frenzy all day, but with HD models this time. We hadn't really heard anything about Reforged for a long time. We had the mount in World of Warcraft, pre-orders have been available forever, and it was supposed to release sometime in 2019. But that's kind of it. Sometimes Time recently, Wowhead caught the scent of a new client on Blizzard's delivery network, and they've been scrambling to get any and all screenshots that they can since then. You can see the new models of all of our favourite units, new models of the heroes for campaign play and for multiplayer play, and there's going to be similar systems like StarCraft, like the player icons and display pictures and everything else. And from the most part, it looks like the majority of what we would need is going to be available on this client. It might still be a beta or a PTR version of the game that will be accessible accessible before it actually goes live, either to test functionality, or just give us another reason to pick up a virtual ticket. Or it could be the actual client ready to go on Blizzard's end. All they have to do is release it and anyone who buys the game can download and play Warcraft 3 Reforged. I think that's probably going to be what happens. Sometime during BlizzCon they're going to say, oh, and you guys remember that whole Warcraft 3 Reforged thing we were planning last BlizzCon? Yeah, that's releasing, wait for it, 
right now. If you boot up your Battle.net launcher, you can download and play right this very second. I hope they do that. They might not, I guess, even though it would be the coolest thing ever, but at the very least we'll get a release date for Warcraft 3 Reforged at BlizzCon. At this point, there's basically no way that we don't find out when that game will be re-releasing. So if that's something you've been looking forward to, or even something you've forgotten about entirely until now, that should be in our hands within the next few weeks. And then before we head off, I wanted to touch on some live news. I know, news about the current game, what could have possibly happened, right? Well, the Alliance finally filled up their side of the Eternal Palace Hall of Fame. That means two things. Cross Realm Mythic Eternal Palace next week, very exciting, but also Eternal Palace nerfs next week. So we have some nerfs for Lady Ashvane and for Queen Ajara. The huge wall halfway through the raid, and then the final boss are getting nerfed. Let's start with Lady Ashvane. Her health will be reduced by 5% on Mythic difficulty, waterlogged periodic damage will be reduced by 10% on Mythic difficulty, and rippling wave damage will also be reduced by 10% in Mythic difficulty. Those are some pretty significant nerfs, and will make the fight a lot easier for anyone that's still struggling on it. The fight as a whole is quite problematic, and a few quirky strategies strategies have been trying to cheese the fight since the first days of Mythic Eternal Palace. I know our guild had to 3 heal 3 tank this fight to get anywhere in the first few weeks and we were barely scraping by with that plan. It's a tough nut to crack for sure, hopefully these nerfs will help you out. And then if you're stuck on the final boss of this raid tier, these nerfs might help you secure that kill once and for all. The stand together and stay decree combination will no longer be possible on heroic difficulty. For mythic difficulty, the overzealous hulk and tide mistress health will be reduced by 10%. Draining Ashara's ancient wards now reduce its energy by an additional 5 points in all difficulties. Empowering a ward also increases its energy by 5 additional points in all difficulties. Healers are less likely to get targeted by the march decree in all difficulties. The short circuit cast from ads now drains 10% less energy from wards in all difficulties, and the essence of Azeroth now has an increased duration if there are fewer than 20 players in the raid on normal and heroic, and it lasts 5 seconds longer for mythic difficulty. Quite a few parts of the fight were targeted with these nerfs, and it should make the overall encounter quite a bit easier in most difficulties, but especially on mythic. Let's get a few more players into that cutting edge club, eh? And that's all I have for news and tidbits in this video, but there is something else I want to talk about very briefly before we hop off. Blizzard has been kind enough to give us five virtual ticket codes for this year's BlizzCon to give away to all of you lovely folks. We're not running the giveaway on YouTube because that tends to be a huge pain in the rear, so we're going to do it on Twitter instead. All you have to do for a chance to win one of these virtual tickets is hop on over to the tweeters, I'll give you a link straight to the giveaway tweet in the comments section below, and follow the rules. It's a super simple quick one, not really any hoops to jump through, just make sure you're following our Twitter and reply to the tweet with what you're most excited about regarding BlizzCon 2019. We'll pick some random winners after the giveaway closes in a few days, again all of the details will be in the tweet. I just wanted to let you know about the giveaway just in case you weren't on Twitter already. And that's all for this video. What do you think about the Vulpira racial abilities? Are they still a bit too strong, or are they just the right amount of awesome for a new allied race to make sure everybody race changes to them as soon as they become available? What about Warcraft 3 Reforged? Did you forget that was supposed to be a thing sometime this year, or have you been waiting for the announcement since last BlizzCon? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, you can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.